We're gonna do a little bit of maintenance on the uh, LM2 today, the 1500 Duramax. First, I wanted to note, uh, just uh, a couple days ago, I actually swapped out the tires, and uh, I went for a 315-70-17. Um, so this is like a 34 and a half uh, by 12 and a half. So this is similar to a 35, um, and it's E-rated, everything. So it's a great tire. Um, the tires we had on before it actually, were about a 33.9 so they're about a half inch smaller and then they were an inch narrower um but that little bit of a difference uh i don't know if you could tell on camera uh, i'm looking through a little screen on a gopro but i mean it makes the truck look a lot bigger and beefier um the other ones genuinely look small so if you uh if you're going to be doing something similar and going to a three inch lift on these trucks i highly recommend doing like just a full 35 it makes the world a difference um yeah, I mean, even on the back right here, it just looks awesome. So, yeah, that's enough with this part. Uh, I don't really know where all these... Oh, I know what happened. Sprinklers went on, and uh, and it was super windy outside. Ugh, now i got to get all these hard water spots off. Normally, it doesn't hit the truck, but the winds have been, like, super crazy lately. And today's, like, the day after Thanksgiving. So, um, up here where I live... The winds are just nuts so um anyways it's just kind of where i wanted to leave this off with you guys so right now i'm going to go jack the truck up so i can get the bucket underneath there that's really the only reason i'm going to do it and um what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the fuel filter um kind of show you guys that process and give you like my two cents on it because it's not a hard job but i've seen a lot of you guys strip out that 36 millimeter nut on the bottom i don't know if it's because you're throwing channel locks on and don't have the right size but i went out to the auto parts store to go like pick that up because while we have them at the shop i don't have a 36 millimeter here especially like a um a shallow one and i like to do a lot of stuff here in my driveway uh this is gonna be my second oil change on this i'm not gonna pay anyone to do it because i don't want anyone touching the truck and uh so the oil filter fuel filter all of this stuff costed me i think even with like my discounted gm it was like 130 bucks 140 bucks um but it's actually probably cheaper than that online i've already looked and uh Anyways, so as much as I'd say go support your local dealer uh, parts department, like it literally was twice the price on there. It was like freaking $75 or $80 for a fuel filter, and you can find them for like 40 bucks for an AC Delco online. So we jacked the truck up, got the bucket there. We have our oil fuel filter socket, 35, 36 millimeter it says, uh, but it fits perfectly on the 36. Nice and snug. We're gonna get that guy out of the package. And then we're gonna go to the fuel filter right here, which is right around where the front door handle is on the truck for reference. So it's kind of all the way further upstream. There's our stock OEM tank. Hopefully Titan tanks and I can work something out and getting a bigger Titan tank in here. That'd be awesome. Um, so we're gonna swap this guy out. Basically you just remove this lower bowl. You can drain it, which is probably what I'll do right now. You put a Torx bit in here and let's drain the, the fuel. That way this thing doesn't make so much of a mess. And then uh, we're gonna let it go in the bucket here. If you wanna like do this the right way, like consult your owner's manual. Um, yeah. Anyway, the reason I say that is, I don't know, I, I cracked it open with a T40 um, and pretty much no fuel came out, which is kind of crazy. But yeah, I mean, maybe a couple uh, drops, but yeah, it spins freely and nothing. So I don't know if that's just because it has like no room for the, uh, for like, like there's like a suction, so to speak, like there's no air able to allow the fuel to escape or this thing just kind of stays dry until the pump starts running. I, I really don't know. Uh, I would have assumed this would have been full of fuel, but I took this thing completely out and nothing. So uh, anyways, this is my first time doing it myself. I don't really ever typically do stuff like this. So we do got a new O-ring uh, for that bottom bowl and we got a new filter. And yeah, so what we're gonna do next is get this guy on there and um, take it off. Oh yeah, I can see why people strip these out. You are not doing this with vice grips at all. No way.
All right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, look at that, guys. So, I'm gonna have a mess here. But that versus this. This this is what new is, this is what the old one is. That is just really bad. That's a 15 millimeter on the bottom. You know, if anything, you can watch this video and you guys can, um, you know, just kind of have all the tools laid out, prepared, whatever. All right, everything's nice and wiped down. We got the drain plug in. We got our PF66 oil filter on, AC Delco. Well, cool, we put seven quarts in it. We're gonna let her start. Then we're gonna check the oil level. Uh, something I want to show you guys here, we are running the Pulsar LT. Um, if you haven't checked these out, you really need to, if you have a similar truck to mine. And the reason I say that is, is that it allows you to calibrate for the tire size. It also, so that way your speedometer is correct, that way your MPG readings are correct, uh, your odometer is correct, that way maintenance intervals, whatever, are correct. Um, what's the other thing it does on the fly through the steering wheel um, it does a throttle booster as well so uh, a lot of guys are like you can press on the pedal harder it's not if you actually do your research on it uh, you'll see that like there's even some um, like diagram set up and stuff where any of these throttle boosters I mean they're all they're all different companies but if they if they all operate the same way which I haven't tested them in this way I don't know that I actually could um, but like they'll show you the throttle valve uh like opening and closing and there's a delay if you just put your foot all the way to the floor uh there's a delay in the way that it opens up versus if you have one of these put your foot to the floor uh it's a big difference so reason i say that is turn it all the way up all the way all the way extreme max levels like you will do burnouts in this thing from the second you touch the throttle like if you mash it down three quarters or full throttle i never drive it this way but the reason I mention that is that go ahead and go try that. Just go stomp, stomp on it. Traction control off. Just go rip on it. With especially big tires like this, you're not going to do it because it's not the same thing. So if you hate on it, it's because you don't know anything about it. And I am so tired of reading those comments. So anyways, the Banks Pedal Monster was in here. I love the Banks Pedal Monster. But again, that right there was already doing what this Pulsar LT was doing. And the reason that I went with this is that the LT is just, it's it's a bunch of products in one. I uh, did not need to go buy a throttle booster, throttle, you know, system, whatever. There's a ton of them, Pedal Commander, all that. Pedal Monster is probably one of my favorites uh, for a standalone unit by itself. But again, the LT is badass because it does that. I mean, it does a ton of different things, guys. I have did a separate video on this. You guys can check out on my YouTube channel. Just go back like 10 videos. And you'll see all of the different things it can do. Um, those are probably two of the biggest things. I know I'm missing other features. That's not what this video is about. But I am running that. And uh, let's see. I haven't been under the hood in a while. But the other update on this as well, which I am trying really hard to get with the guys uh, at Banks to get this thing figured out, is, uh, well, you see it right there. In the flesh. We do have a Derringer in this truck. It's the only Derringer running around in a 2021 Duramax. I've played with it a little bit. My opinion of it is pretty pretty good, pretty high. But I can't speak for Banks because actually they really don't, like I'm not in sitting in the rooms with the engineering team and I can't really tell you like exactly what's holding everything up, but I could tell you that Banks is doing the best that they can. And this thing's got pushed back so many times. Uh, but the world is crazy right now. Like, I think if the world was the way it was pre-2019, you guys would already have this, in my opinion, but I can't speak for them, I don't know. I do know that it's a priority. They're not just sitting here, like, screwing with you guys. They're not trying to piss you guys off. I know you guys in the LM2 community really wanted this. I personally wanted to see it released to the public, especially before the LZO, um, the 2023 version of this motor came out. What are you gonna do? So, um, I know that they're trying to do that stuff as much as they can. Let's see, I have no other complaints. 11,000 miles almost on this truck and we're doing the maintenance. I've had no issues with the truck at all. Um, I love the tires. These Nittos are amazing. 
the I, I can't speak highly enough of this Cognito leveling kit with the Kings. I mean, the truck drives like a dream. Let's not forget what we got in the back. Uh, we also got the Kings with the adjusters in the back. And then also, if you can see from this angle, you may not know what you're looking for down there, but that's the Deaver Mini Pack. Uh, I believe this had a composite, a plastic overload um, spring. Composite, plastic, kind of, we're going to call it the same thing, but it's not. It's not steel. It was very weird. Some of these LT trim trucks came like that. I didn't like it. Uh, I could have opted for a full Deaver Pack, but um, right now we're doing a lot of testing with uh, Roadmaster Active Suspension. So right now... The way the truck sits, um, I had those springs sat on there so that way we could do some towing videos, some towing setups. And then also, the whole point of it is, is that I wanted the truck level and then to put those on. I actually made a video that you guys will see that I kind of made a mistake on. And it was that I overcompensated too much. I, I had the, the truck sitting a little bit pre-runnered, if you will. The back was sitting down because I wanted to overcompensate for when I put those springs on. They can add a little bit of ride height and uh, when it's unloaded. And I didn't want that because this isn't the tow pig. This is not what we do with this truck, right? This is just the grocery getter. Uh, this ended up being a lot cheaper than buying like a Traverse. And it wasn't about the money. We always wanted something like this anyways. But for the fuel economy, the power, the looks, the style, like everything, it ended up being a better pick for us as a family vehicle, believe it or not. So um, that's kind of the like update with this. Um, you know, let me know if you guys want to know any other information on this truck. Uh, we don't do a ton with it. I don't off-road it. I don't do a lot of crazy stuff. If you go over to my Instagram, you're going to see a lot of photos from when we took both the trucks out uh, to go meet up with um, with Cognito, since they both have Cognito kits on them. And we met up with them uh, up at El Mirage. We did some driving, did some shooting. Um, did a lot of good, crazy shoots on there. You know, it was pretty sweet, pretty awesome. Um... I think that's it guys i mean as much as i love this truck too if you guys are interested in this come around february march let me know there's a small i don't want to say small there's a decent possibility that we move on from this this is a two-wheel drive and uh i'm thinking about getting four-wheel drive and then getting the trail boss version that has no chrome and then stepping it up inside the truck you know to the new interior um the downside to that, that trail boss I was looking at, I think if you guys go build it out with the new motor and everything, it's 21 city, 23 highway or something like that. This is window sticker to 21 city, 33 highway. So it's much more efficient. Um, that's not, again, why we bought it, but that's a pretty big stab at fuel economy. That's 10 MPGs less than what this thing is at. And given with the big tires and stuff, we still get about 30 Um if you drive it conservatively on the freeway right it's a 10 speed transmission so it's always keeping these rpms down down nice and low um but anyways let me know we might i have two other vehicles that are four-wheel drive trucks so i don't know that i need a third one that's four-wheel drive but why not then maybe go up a little bit bigger see if we can do something crazier do some 37s i'm not sure but we just put these on like two days ago and it kind of made my decision a little bit more difficult honestly i might just color match the thing there was some cool bumpers on it go from there i'm not really sure so but anyways stay in contact with me you guys can reach me at you know american duramax on instagram um i mean the, the inside of this truck if you guys haven't seen it already it's already ceramic coated and all that but um i mean the seats the interior is phenomenal this is as dirty as it's ever gotten um the back seats have always had the car seats in them the actual seats themselves have never been sat on before this is like made for dogs um this is like a super super thick material so there's no there's no one's ever sat on so there's no stains no rips no tears and then we obviously got the uh chevy floor mats that go like in every crevice and we've never spilt anything um you know it's not fully loaded by any means but it's a crew cab and it seems like the mpgs on the newer units are starting to go like way down um keep in mind those are four wheel drives with 33s but i don't know i don't really know the a lot of the reasons but i could tell you that i don't think any of the new trucks step into the the almost mid 30s category for mpgs anymore and a lot of you guys buy these trucks for that reason again we didn't i just know that i wanted 
I have 1500 and I wanted a diesel. And I like the longevity of these diesel trucks. I like the 10 speed on them, um, all of that. So that's all I got for you guys. I appreciate you watching. I just want to give you guys an update on the red 1500 Duramax. If you guys want to see more videos, well, first you got to subscribe. Too, you got to let me know what else you guys want put that in the, the comments below you know what do you guys think i should do to this truck next assuming that i don't sell it um yeah let me know hopefully we get a titan tank hopefully you get a run vse fuel saver system in here that would be an awesome upgrade have dual filters in there if those two things will work out on the fuel side of things hopefully we can get this derringer all paired up and done and then if so depending if uh, banks comes out with something or if they don't uh, I do want to get somebody's air intake in here uh, once the air intake needs to be replaced or the filter needs to be changed. Once that comes up on the dash, I plan on ripping this guy out. And then there's a lot of upgrades from PPE that we can get talking into in here as well. <clears throat> and again, if we can get that Derringer cranked up, I think those things like the air intake, the intercooler from PPE, all their PPE tubing, all that stuff, like then at that point, once you unchoke this engine and you actually get some tunability to it, I think those products would then make sense and make more power um, and kind of unleash the beast, if you will. Uh, Cause at that point it's more of a limiting factor than it is now. I think it does plenty fine with the air fuel exhaust that it has now. I don't know. That's it. Kind of done rambling about this, guys. I just wanted to give you guys some content on this. I'm going to jump over to the next video, which you'll have hopefully in a couple days after this one. And we are going to run the uh, fuel saver setup and all the details and why you'd want to do that on one of these trucks, any of these diesel pickup trucks. And we're going to jump onto the blue one, the high country, next. See you guys later.